Open government remains a very much, <coughs> I'm sorry, open government remains very much a part of the political discussion in South Dakota. Some citizens believe that South Dakota already has good open government. Other citizens believe much more needs to be done in order for the state to make government uh, activity more transparent. This is a two-part question. Does the state of South, or does the South Dakota legislature need to give a higher priority to open government? And would you work for and support good open records uh, law for South Dakota? This issue goes well beyond the website. Um, according to the Supreme Court, all of South Dakota state and local records are presumed closed, that means secret, confidential, unless there's a specific law that requires them to be open. Every other state, and even the federal government, presume exactly the opposite. And that's why you hear that South Dakota is last in the nation in open government. So when the, the bill went through the legislature in the last session that required South Dakota to put revenues and expenditures on a website, and it went to the governor, and the governor vetoed it, and then the majority in the Senate upheld that veto. Um, it was a step in the right direction that didn't get any teeth. But of course, then after that happened, and there was some flack that came back in the current administration, we all of a sudden got a website. But I think it needs to go well beyond that. We need to change our presumption of law. And that's a, a legal term that means that we are able to go and see where our government revenues are coming from and where they're being spent. And of course, we're not talking about common sense confidentiality issues. We're not talking about listing people's social security numbers or personnel issues on a website. We are talking about how much money is each department getting in their budget and where are they spending it? And where are these 3,000 contracts that the state government has? Who are they with? Which companies and how much are they? And how much of these companies made over the last 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 years? And who are the, who are the contracts with? We don't know. So um, I tried to find out. When I started to run for office, I decided to test this. And I called one of our state departments, and I asked them where the revenue came from. And it took four phone calls and four return phone calls for them to say they were sorry they couldn't give me that information. So I challenge any one of you to try to get information from the State Department on revenues and expenditures. And I think that um, when I get to Pure, I will absolutely change that one. But as a teacher, you constantly are going to professional development, learning new things, trying to get better at your craft, and you always have to fill out evaluations at the end. And sometimes we all get a little jaded in our professions. And I remember one time when I got called on it, you know, I gave a, a lady who came in to an excellent seminar, well, thanks for reviewing some concepts I was already aware of. She said, beware faint praise. I think we have set ourselves so low, the bar so low for open government here that two of the biggest critics would call this website a giant step forward. But both the articles almost mentioned, also mentioned that we have a long ways to go. Just because there's a website out there with some information on it doesn't mean all of our open government problems are solved. You know, where did the governor come up with the money for his laptops? Who goes to the governor's son? What are all the state contracts? An article that wasn't read is also one that I remember reading in the Rapid City Journal. I don't have it with me. But in order to find the governor's salary, you can't put in my rounds. At, this at the time the article was written, you can't put in Marion rounds, you can't put in rounds, you have to put in M rounds. So do we have a readily usable, accessible source of information for all people? Great step forward with this website, but why did the government veto the bill? Why did veto the bill last year, you know, the open government's bill? Why did the Senate uphold that veto? I think we have a start here, and I will give credit to the governor for that. But we have a long ways to go until we really have an open and transparent government. And I think it starts with getting our statute, our criteria back with everybody else. All government records are presumed open. Not all government records are presumed closed. Obviously things like social security numbers, personal information, that's just common sense. And South Dakota is full of common sense people. So of course we're going to protect private sensitive information, but I think it all starts with that presumption. All government records, all government information should be presumed open unless there's a very, very good reason for closing. The government gives me around a variety of levels. Uh, the people, the, the work of the people needs to be done in the open. And whether that's in meetings, uh, whether it's in contracts, whether it's in uh, you know, expenditures and revenues, all those things need to be available. And I think that there are huge, I, I think that the South Dakota has always had open government. To a certain degree, it hasn't been successful. I think they've made huge strides in making sure that happens. Will I continue to work for that here? I'll, absolutely. I have no problem with that at all. But you've got, but I will tell you, tell you from a personal level, You've got to be a little careful. There are some things you, that, that cannot be discussed in the public. 
you know, there's personnel issues, there's salary issues, and I want to be very careful that we balance this kind of open government to make sure that everything uh, stays confidential. confidential. Uh, uh, closed meetings, if you really, if you don't have a, an opportunity to have, like I said, with my commissioners, if I don't have the opportunity to have a free flow of discussion, it's very difficult. It's Stymie's discussion, it's Stymie's good ideas, it actually Stymie's government to a certain degree. But as far as the record of what we do, absolutely that all has to be out there. The contracts need to be out there. Now there are certain certain things that are very difficult to find, and I think they're making big, great, great steps to take care of that. And I'll work for that as well up here. But I think South Dakota all in all is fairly open, uh, difficult to find, the access hasn't been there, but I think they're making great strides and making sure that happens for everybody. And I can repeat that two-part question if you need that. Okay. Uh, sure and yes. Probably, you know, I mean, we've heard a lot about open government, and a lot of people have been very critical of this. But let me tell you, being in the legislature, the, the biggest critic of, of the governor, the legislature, the state of South Dakota, is the Sioux Falls Argus leader. Let me read you a uh, Argus leader, Blair, that was in the uh, paper here recently. Uh, okay. Uh, they start off up as down black as white and say South Dakota has a new website collecting amounts of public information. Okay, maybe that's a flip response to something that is in fact a real victory for free and open access to government, the state's new open website. And getting information that's already public available used to be a hassle. Now, delightfully, it seems the state has seen the light. Open South Dakota is a powerful, flexible tool Available to any citizen with an internet connection. Salvi data is available as its information on government spending and the state budget. Adding more information about the state contracts should be on the state's agenda. Overall, though, this is a huge step in the right direction, and everybody involved, yes, from the governor on down, deserves credit. The second biggest critic in the state, <clears throat> South Dakota, is a guy by the name of Borderwick, who is a lobbyist for the newspaper uh, companies. Congratulations, Governor Mike Browns, and the new state government website that provides public access to information. The governor recently in, in, unveiled Open South Dakota. The governor's Open South Dakota website is an excellent step forward for open government in South Dakota, and best of all, we can build on it as a model. Do we have open government in South Dakota? Yes, we do. Do we need to more, do more? Sure. Are we, are we in better shape now than we've ever been before? Yes. The open government is that the governor vetoed the bill last year and was upheld in the House and with the Senate upheld the veto. I do understand that the website was just open and that more information is available. I think that when we go to Pier in the spring that we will look at this issue again and I think that the legislature will determine if that website is, is indeed offering enough information to the general public in regard to open government. I've never really questioned if, how much open government we have. I guess I've never really been that inquisitive. I run a corporation that basically does government work. The, the job that I do, the people used to be served in Redfield and Custer. Today, that same cost about $450 a day in, in Redfield, about $105 in Spearfish. It's a lot better deal. Is it open and free? Yes, with the, the uh, 501c3 corporations, that is open on the website. The, uh, an open government, so to speak, although it's a nonprofit corporation. So the government is indeed providing a lot of services via the nonprofit uh, sector, if you will. And in worldwide, we're finding that to be a pretty good model. It's called the NGO around the world, and the third world countries are using that particular model. But regarding open government, I do believe that there's progress being made. I would, I'm very interested in pursuing that when you get to peer and to ascertain if the uh, website that's been developed is, is adequate. I do agree that I believe the newspapers are very interested in this particular issue, perhaps in their, in their, in best, in their own interest. I think that there needs to be some issues with regard to, to wages and so on that I don't think are everybody's business. But overall, I'm in favor of open government and we'll, we'll support that when I get to here.